<laughs> y'all welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is Shayna, and i do a ton of her content but today we're doing the last read with me for the addicted and callaway sister series this is the epilogue novel some kind of perfect i am so freaking excited you have no idea how excited i am to read this book so nervous and it's bittersweet because it's the ending of a beautiful beautiful series i looked inside and just gave the pages and it says it's the conclusion, the finality of the core six that makes me so upset because it really makes me think that they're never going to write a book about them again that is in their perspectives and is wholly about them. So I really think that this is the end. If you haven't watched my other read with me, so you definitely should go do that. I literally finished Way Down, which is the last book in the Hello Sister series. It was also Rick and Daisy's book yesterday, and it had the epilogue in there, and that book was written before this uh, this one, obviously, and they put, like, gap in there, but this one, it seems like it's picking up right where Long Way Down left off before the epilogue. I believe that it is. No idea. This means so much to me that they would leave off on this part because it means so much to them. It's something that they all chose to, to do together to tell their stories to the public. And I'm so excited because I think that's what it's going to be covering. At least some of it. They're going to be going into detail about their past and, and things that have hurt them. And then I'm assuming we also get to know things about their future. So so it gives a lot of spoilers for the entire series just so you are aware docu series too and they're producing it themselves and they're kind of explaining everything that they've been through and telling their story and their side of it and not just what was edited in the reality show and people understand the cho the decisions and the choices that they're making and they understand how they grew up and their lives and their thoughts and their situations that they've been through and maybe that would make them more human than just characters in a tv show which shows this because you can already see after one episode that's aired that it, it it has helped tremendously and the more and more that they put out there and the more and more honest they are and the more and more that they tell their stories and the more open and honest they are about what they want to share the more and more good feedback and help they're going to get from people and i absolutely love that although the hate and stuff that they get is just extremely undeserving and literally the first chapter in this opened up where someone assaulted one of the six and it's just still not right and it's still always going to be there and I think that they're always showing that but there are good people out there. And this decision that they just made right now I know is like one of the hardest things and it's a huge thing that's going on in the world for the past year or so or at least that I've noticed uh, popping up more on social media TikTok lately um, and YouTube and news outlets and stuff about showing your children online and this is something that they were having a discussion about whether or not they should have their children on the document series now their lives are a bit different than just regular day people that make tiktoks or people that are on youtube they are high up their celebrity they are famous famous so it's there's a big difference all making different decisions for their children and they are scared to make the wrong one and it's really hard because at a child that age, they can't make a decision for themselves and you have to make that decision for them and that because they don't want to ruin their child. They don't want to have them grow up having anxiety and fear or being exploited or anything like that. So they are all trying to make the right decision, which honestly, you have to go with your gut. You need, if you are religious, pray about it. If you just just go with what your instincts tell you is my first thought and i think that's exactly what they did also highly impressed with how with the authors putting this in this book and bringing light to this subject because it's actually really big in the u.s and it's something that a lot of people can relate to and maybe they were struggling with this, with this decision and they read that chapter and they realized they knew the decision that they wanted to make after reading that so th that's just an example of how these books can really help people, even if it's something like that. I didn't realize how much I missed Lily's perspective in Tanal because I haven't re read an addicted book in two and a half books and I've been reading them sporadically because you know I have a kid, I have a full time job, a house, and a lot going on. So I just missed her hearing her inner thoughts and just her quirky and just her quirky personality and I love that I get to read that here and we get everyone literally for the millionth time we get to read everyone's perspective in one book so you get a little piece of every single one of them. So I understand why this is epilogue novel now and I love it because I am a huge huge sentimental person. I love memories, I love storylines, I love getting to know people and I love the details. I've always been that way and this book gives you that. It's like basically it, it tells you about their future, happening in their lives. It's not huge drastic drama filled storylines it's just them living their everyday life and 
I love that. It's not like a drama-filled reality TV show if it's like a calm-down family reality TV show or like they're filming a docu-series. It's something that I'm going to treasure forever being able to know details about their lives and not just the drama and the conflicts that they had to go through. We actually get to know them more as people even though they're characters, stories in their families and not just have to go through those hard times with them but also just get to live their day-to-day -day life and I love that this, is the, that this is this book. I know a lot of people may find it boring but honestly if you read the entire series there's no way in hell anyone could find it boring because you fall in love with the character so much that you dive into this and want it so badly. I have made it to chapter 10. I am so in love and so happy that I get to see how their future falls out and I'm learning because I was skimming through the book just flipping through it and realized that they're going through the years some kind of perfect ends at the epilogue that was or the same year that the epilogue was in Long Way Down and I love that they're giving us the filler information from the time gap from the end of Long Way Down to that point I love that they're giving all of us all of it the they're showing us how their family grows when it happens how it happens what they're thinking their day-to-day -day lives their companies and everything like that I love that we're seeing that and I think it is beautiful and precious and I just love how this book is written and again I'm only on page 118 and on chapter 10 and I cannot tell you how much my heart is soaring for it so we're finally getting into a little bit of conflict in here, I guess definitely to spice it up, make it interesting, as huge as some of the conflicts they've gone through in their other books, but I think that it is a huge important part and violence is huge and it's another thing they are bringing awareness to and Lo is getting to know Garrison a little bit better now and they have so much more in common than... <laughs> Hi, Emmy. Hi, Emmy. They have so much more in common than they will ever realize. <laughs> not only do, not only is Garrison going through physical pain, he's going through emotional and mental pain that's being brought on by family members that Lo had to go through with his father. He was torn down by his father in so many ways, and Garrison has been torn down by words mentally by family just like Lauren was and Garrison didn't realize that until now I think that it's also opening doors for this coming series that they have after this one and I also believe that it is helping us see more into low uh, as to who he is now I wonder how many people meet the person they once were and feel like they're staring at a stranger I am happy my son will never meet that man. I'm happy Lily had the husband she deserved, and I'm happy for me. Bless you, because I finally love who I am. Good for you, Lo. I'm very proud. I think Garrison has literally become like... Lo is Reich to Garrison. I think that he's become the third little brother in their group, and I love that. And it works so perfectly because he's integral part of Reich in Lowe's family so I really like that and here we are we always know that they're always going to be alcoholics and sex addicts and I love that they still put in their conflicts in here that they're showing more and more and very realistic ways that this could be for a sex addiction and or an alcoholics family where as your child gets older it's a lot harder to have sex and it's a lot harder to find to have that privacy especially if you have more than one child and when you're a sex addict and you're so used to a routine or you're being told no you, no, you can't do it or you feel bad because you know you don't you don't want your child to see or find out about this and so on and so forth and it drives you insane crazy because you can't have what you're craving and the schedule that you're on just doesn't work or it's more difficult for a sex addict especially when you have children and when y'all and to see Lily's growth here, freaking amazing. It's everything. Then we have to start trying and planning or else it'll never happen. We're too good at, pro good at procrastinating and we procrastinated on this. It's our family. She takes a breath, not finished yet. And I decided to tell you today because I'd rather make this decision on the worst day than my best. I need to remember that there will be plenty of bad, shitty days and those bad, shitty days can't derail my future. Our future. I think that is so perfect and well said. She has grown so much and so far, and she is the strongest freaking human being. 
with everything that she's been through and she still has her same sense of humor. She's still herself, her quirky little, her Lily Calloway Hill. And I'm proud of her and so excited to see their story continue until the ending of this book. And this book has definitely gotten nostalgic on us. They bring up a lot from the past, some good, some bad. And right now we have some bad with Daisy bringing up a past relationship that is with her. A lot of internal scars from them and things, a lot of internal scars from them and just hurt that's still not gone. And I feel really bad for her. And this is the first time that Daisy's kind of acknowledged it because they haven't spoken of it since it happened five years ago. That's pretty nice. But I do really like the fact that this book does get pretty nostalgic because I love the memories that we're coming back to in this book. So back then, I shoved the attached sentiments to these violations too far down. I didn't feel a thing. It's easier to be. It's easier being numb to have zero regrets. But I wouldn't trade when I feel now for feeling nothing by proceed by processing these memories i'm more apt to say no i feel more empowered to walk away to speak out about my experiences after my pain and healing came strength i'm stronger today to read these precious moments where we get to see exactly where they get in their future that epilogue that we get in long way down we get to see how they got there and another beautiful chapter of connor and rose and them building their family and it was amazing to experience because the looks in this book they mention in passing like they've already passed and they're just reiterating to us like oh yeah this is a memory that this could have happened but it was squashed and it didn't get set through but this is a conflict that is still in my mind that could have happened I and it's still mainly about the media they're still trying to spread rumors and lies and stuff about the three three ways between Reich and Lily and Low, and it's definitely going to hurt their children's futures and that's something that Lily is extremely worried about but obviously they're not going to let the media define them and choose how lives and how they raise their children and so on and so forth so I love that they are reiterating that in this book because they've had that same conversation in other scenarios in the other books as well and up with more confidence in their decision even with more and more conflicts coming up because you know it never just it never stops but you also see the good that media slash fans can do even though they can be cruel and hateful and be a huge support and after they aired their docuseries and telling their truths and things about their past and opening up a lot of fans were able to shut down a lot of media out that would try and attack them or defame them in any sort of way. A lot of fans got a lot of those things shut down because they were like, you're wrong, this isn't right, and so on and so forth. So media isn't all bad. It can be extremely bad, but you can't have one without the other, and I think that's the really sucky part, and that's just something you have to accept even though it is extremely infuriating. Infuri you are human, Frederick tells him. It's human to be affected by trauma long after the trauma ends. How accurate and true that is. Connor is definitely not like most humans, but he still has limits. And I think what this person has done to him and Daisy and honestly to their entire group isn't just something that you can just get over. Even after he's long gone and he is in jail serving time for the awful heinous things that he did it still doesn't make that stuff that happened go away and I love that we get to see more of Lauren and Rose's relationship because in fire we got to see a good amount of it and now we get to see even more we get to hear her thoughts about him in the past and how close they've become and how much fight like brother and sister to so proud of Lauren and the way that he is taking control over his company and doesn't take BS from anybody. He has grown into himself. He has so much confidence. He used to think that he wasn't worthy of the world to even be here. Thinks otherwise. And I am so proud to be able to see that and to see how much he's grown. Love is power. And I can't tell you why. It transcends every word I can conjure. And these catalogs surges through me like battalions made of fire and water made of ivory and rose. I awaken and I know I come second. I'll, I will always put them first. Oh, Connor, you have come so far from being selfish arrogant man who only cared about himself and didn't believe in love to now putting yourself second and your children and your wife first no i'm gonna miss this fluffy she's so bad 
She's been a part of the series since the very beginning. We didn't get to know much about her until Connor and Rose's first book, but we still did. And she's been a part of their lives for a very long time and so sad to see her go. But I know that it was inevitable. At some point, she was older. Heart warms to see how Rose and Connor explain this to their oldest child about what happened to her and see her acceptance. And I just love how they speak to their children and that they don't sugarcoat things and even though that they're, they're really young, they don't lie to them. To give my children that same honesty that they give their children, I want to be as honest with my children as possible. And it was very sad. At the end, something good came out of it, and I think that this is just hilarious because it's happened more than once in these book series that something bad happens and literally something good happens either in the same day or right after it. So that's kind of neat. You can tell how this book is written. It's just written to be the end which is saddening but also i love that they're giving us this closure because not a lot of book series and authors do that so first the decision that they made a while ago about wanting to have their children in the media or four out of the six of them chose to keep try and keep their children out of the out of social media and out of the paparazzi and out of the limelight as much as possible and then the other two decided to keep their children in the limelight which I understand because given their situation and who they are, I think for them it works. It probably wouldn't have worked out. It would have been just a lot of stress. And honestly, their children would probably be scared. And they don't want them to grow up like that. To understand and feel as safe as they can in the limelight. But for their family, I think that it worked perfectly. For the other four, I think that it works for them as well. Especially given their past and with how many children that they have. So, also, what I think is hilariously funny is this joke that their five-year-old child decided to say to the paparazzi. What do you call a woman with four legs? What? Doggy style. He's five. Now, he doesn't understand the meaning of that, but I find that hilarious, and so does his mom, who turned tomato red like she always does. <laughs> yeah, I love this. I freaking love this because Lily has pretty much predicted a lot of the relationships that are in these books and every single one of them has come true and she literally just says here even though she predict predicted this a while ago and she says here it's not much of a prediction but it was in the beginning witness their beginning and much much more i don't think i'll ever have to witness their end it's not as not so much a prediction as it is a fact now which is hilarious because literally the next paragraph states that they're going to be together forever I think about all the ventures we've ever made now that Garrison is beginning his. Hallway comics, superhero, and scones, all three of us used to lack ambition, not because we didn't love something, but because we never believed we could be better than the people around us. Why try when someone else would just step right over you? It, it seemed like too much work. Now we're all discovered ambition and pride, but not without believing in ourselves first, that we could beat our own sad expectations, and we did. That is absolutely beautiful, and I couldn't have said it better myself, Lily. This is exactly what I was trying to say about Lo and how he used to be and how he is now. And Garrison is very much, he's extremely similar to what Lo is, and that's exactly why he took so much interest in him, and he was able to, he literally saved his life. He would not be anywhere near where he is or what he is right now if it wasn't for them, and I am so happy about that. God, and I love this growth so freaking much because Lo was so terrified to have children and especially to have a son because he didn't want to turn into his father. He didn't want his son to be scared of him or to be the villain. He his children to ever view him like that. And oh my God, that is so completely op the opposite of what it is. He is the hero to his children. And I love that. And I think that having their children actually helped him so much more in the long run, become himself and become the confident Lo that he is today. And I am so impressed and love it so much. Oof. Connor is now my hero. And if I ever need someone in my corner, I would definitely want him to be in mine. Because the people he cares about and he loves, he takes care of. And although Rose fights to the bitter end the same way, Connor has a way of winning. The nostalgia of this scene, of this chapter for Daisy and Reich. They took a trip to Costa Rica in their past books. It was the bonus chapter and a lot of things happened there. And one of her dreams that she has always wanted to have or like bucket list sort of thing, Reich has been checking off for her and he gave to her. And that's something that they just brought up because they're back in Costa Rica and they took their child there. And it's something that they never thought that they would have and they do. And it's the sweetest 
most memorable. I encapsulate this quiet day, this time, the second, tucking it gently away for safekeeping. I never want to lose these feelings, but if it happens to wane, I'll remember that I can need it all again as long as I'm living. Just wait. I'm alive, I whisper, for these kinds of moments. In Costa Rica, so long ago, he proclaimed this beneath the waterfall. You're alive, Daisy Calloway, for these kinds of moments. And this right here is the sweetest thing ever. Rose let Lo name one of their children. I think it's beautiful. And then how he explained and came up with the name for them, I think is amazing. It screams Lo and it also screams Connor because he was like, this reminds me of you. And I love that they gave him that and that they love him for it. And it came out perfectly. And the freaking middle name, what, what Connor chose for his middle name, it's so freaking sweet because he's like wrote i chose it because it's sentimental to me because it's important to me the hymn of rose when they first before they first met because even back then he knew my lily goes we are in a fight <laughs> i find that so cute it sucks that they disagree and obviously they find it very serious in the moment but i all but i find it so endearing and they like lily and Lowe just don't fight they never do and when they do fight they've always said in the past is also very nostalgic in the books Lily has said we're in a fight it's their day-to-day -day lives and events that are going on I love it and I know that this is something that they hate doing I know as a parent it's not something that you you don't want to discipline your children but sometimes you ha sometimes you have to and but I just find the entire situation very sweet God and to this day, I kid you not, I've said this a million times, and I said it in Rose and Connor's books, I think in both of them with my read with me, is that Lo and Connor's relationship is hilarious, and it is very, very, very similar to my husband's relationship with his best friend. They are very gay for each other, and they play around a lot, and get a lot of my own relationship in because my husband has that same relationship with his best friend that Lo has with his best friend. It makes my heart happy reading them together. And again with the sweetness because just like Rose let Lo pick out one of her children's baby names, Lo and Lily let Reich pick out one of their baby names. Now they gave him a list of names to choose from and he chose his favorite and said that he researched every single one of them which just made all of their hearts sore and like they were so happy about it and it just gives the name more meaning. Um, and I love that and that makes me feel so good. Right now it's definitely going to make Reich and Lily even closer than ever and the fact this is on a holiday and it's hilarious because she screams I just wanted a sugar cookie <laughs> and now this is happening instead because they're stuck and have no service and no one can help them and he's about to get very very close to her but I know he even had to re reiterate to her Lily this in no way changes our relationship you are my friend and I love you it doesn't mean that they're anything more than that just because he's having to see parts of her that he never is supposed to although while this is happening, I really don't think anyone's ever going to think or look at someone in a sexual way. Alright, so I know that this is going to give away some stuff, but you know what? I love it too much. I can't not read it, so I'm going to. Think while they assess and then move urgently all to bring me to the hospital. I never let go of Lo's hand. Outside, as snow flutters in the pitch black Christmas Eve night, the paramedics open the ambulance doors and I'm wheeled towards safety. My hands on my knees, gritting my teeth. Rose shouts at Xander to stay inside my uterus. Connor coaches me to breathe. Wright talks to an EMT. Daisy sets a reindeer-shaped sugar cookie on my belly. Thank you, Daisy. It's all I really wanted. And Lo is right beside me clutching my hand telling me that this is real that no matter what happens he'll be here by the time the world catches up with me i'm in the hospital the clock strikes an hour past midnight and a christmas miracle cries softly in my arms <sighs> y'all my heart is soaring and it's so freaking beautiful i am so happy so freaking happy that the authors have given us this have given us the closure and has given us their future i hate that it's coming to an end so freaking fast but I love that they're giving this to us. It's bittersweet, but you know what? A lot of authors don't. Uh, and this is so hard for me to do. So hard for me not to read this and give this away, even though if you've read the series, you already know everything that happens. But if you haven't read the series, then you're just reading my read-alongs. So you're probably confused about a lot of things. But I find this right here, chapter 29. March 2023, The Meadows Cottage, Philadelphia. It's Daisy's perspective, and it's Daisy and Reich, and Connor, and rose and they're making a decision right now that rose and connor offered them years and years ago and this is a big part of the pro of the prologue that was in long way down which and 
if you've read this series, you just know how big of a deal this is and how close these four are about to get. And, and a lot of women and a lot of families go through this. A most special bond that you can have. Now, I've never gone through it myself and hopefully I never will. But I know a lot of families have and it's a huge, huge thing that happens in the world every single day. It's reality. And the authors have shared this in these books with two of their characters and it makes it so much so much more real this chapter will touch a lot of people especially the ones that have gone through this god and i love rose and she will do anything and everything for the people that she loves mainly her sisters and she's doing this huge thing sister daisy and she's so worried about it and going through this process i know it's difficult and it's hard and it brings us back to when Rike and Daisy were going through a very, very similar situation in Long Way Down, and it took them forever to get to that place, and now they're kind of doing that all over again, just in a slightly different way. And Rose is acknowledging that because she had no idea how her sister felt in that situation because she's never had to deal with it herself, and now helping her sister in this situation, she now does know what it's like in a very similar way. We're on the same team, Rose, he says, forcing this truth. You can try to argue, but you won't win. Translation, I will aid you in the battlefield until death do us part. The translation translation thing that Rose has going has been here since their first book, since the beginning, and it's slowly coming to an end, but I love it. God, and this brings me back to, even though this is very sad, and they yet again have to try this again and that she only has one more chance as she says to get this right or it's over for Rike and Daisy. Going through this is heart-wrenching and this takes me back to Fuel the Fire in their book when they had the hardest time ever. It was their worst and their lowest point and they resorted to their closet and they both broke down and team rose he repeats again then we must both be losing my eyes see our eyes blistering tears build he shakes his head this is not our worst his fingers slide surely from my cheek towards the back of my head he leans down and tilts my chin up his lips nearly brush mine as he murmurs i hear your heart tears slip from the creases of my eyes and before i turn my head away from him away from our children he shields our faces with his cupped hand i murmur just as softly and what sound is my heart making his words dive deep into me it beats it beats he whispers against my lips it beats in equal time with mine he kisses me raw and smooth sentiments cutting and flowing through us relief for our closet to the darkest dimmest depths we kiss in the open with nothing but his hand as the sole barrier between our children and us he breathes assuredness and self-belief filling me completely this is not our worst I put the sneaker closer to my mouth. Daisy, Daisy's crying. Thanks, Rose. Fuck, I'm crying. I wipe my eyes, kiss Daisy's cheek, and, the cr and she crouches to Sully's height and hugs her. Sullivan doesn't know all the details yet, but she knows we're happy, so she smiles with us. Talk later, Rose hangs up. I mess Daisy's hair and whisk going, sweetheart. She nods and looks up at me. We'll be here in Winona, Minnesota. She wags her brows. I push her face affectionately, and she bites my finger. Winona, Minnesota. And here I stand. No rope, no harness. I dip my hands into chalk and near the rock finical. I grip the rough surfaces with two fingers, weightless. My body and my will keep me fucking alive. I lift, my lift myself off the ground, quickly reaching for the next handhold, placing my feet. I rise, I climb, and I hear the soulful calls in the mountains. Hello again, old friend. <laughs> So, two things, two very important things happen in, the, happen in this very short chapter. One, Reich is solo, free solo climb for the first time in six years. And second, I now know where the meaning of this name came from, and it is absolutely beautiful. After the place where they were at when they found out. After, it still all circles back to their one friend that they lost, and how much he has impacted them, and how much he has impacted Reich in his life and I think that it is so beautiful and again this is so freaking real for me like the writers this is so hard because I love so many books and I've become so close and so attached to these characters and these characters feel the most real to me out of any book that I have ever read before and that's saying a lot Garrison is 25 years old and we're going back to the past yet again they have some big news to share to share and he's really scared because he does not have a good relationship with jonathan at all which not many people do five right oh, no, no. if he wants to talk to me i think it should be alone he pushes his brown hair off his forehead honestly i don't need you two flocking me i'm not a fucking kid at 25 right free solo climbed the yosemite triple crown started dating daisy and had it out with greg calloway at 25 i already had moffy just squashed a neighborhood feud that involved garrison and threw a halloween party in my backyard i get it he's an adult but there's a part of me that will always see him as a little brother i never had but I know my dad, I rebut. It's better if we're there. Right nods in agreement. Garrison lets out a heavy breath. I don't like him. I won't ever like him. But I'd rather him see me as a man than some scared little boy bringing his two sons as some kind of shitty backup. 
I think that this is all just, it's very serious in the moment, but I think in the future it's just going to fly off their shoulders. But I love that it takes us back to the past and that they see a garrison in it and they, they see him how he was and then how he is today and how far that they've come and so many years has pa- years have passed and it's amazing to see their family grow and to see their lives changed and to see what I was thinking of him now and this is a huge huge step for Lo I mean they're still growing and they're never going to not stop growing and you get to see here that there's even more changes and there's even more growth in them as they go on they're only trying to protect the garrison and Lo finally admit something to him, hopefully help him see it and open his eyes. Even though he's changed a lot in the past, him being sober and um, he's more softer around women than he is men, doesn't change the fact of who he was and who he still is when it comes to Garrison. What I'm trying to say, I take a pause, say it, say it. From the chair, Garrison looks up at me, say it. My dad verbally abused me for most of my life and I'd rather break my knees than put you in the crossfire. So if you want at it, you're going to have to go through me. Rag lets out an audible breath. He's stunned because I said the actual word. In the past, I've agreed to the statement. I've nodded long, but I doubt I've ever said it like this. My features sharpen towards Rag. What big brother? My eyes burn and start glassing at the side of his cloudy ones. His chest rises and falls heavily. Then he nods at me so much in that one action. Apologies cry for me. Love, a lot of love. I nod back. I still remember that day, ma- the day Reich made me pull my car into a gas station. There he said, our dad abuses you. He's verbally abusive and he's fucked with your head. I told him, I know. Part of me, part of me had always known. No one had really used the word with me before Reich. I've come to terms with my past. I can talk about what happened. I can even admit that my love for my father never bled away. Despite everything, he could gut me with a knife and I'd still love him. After years of therapy, I understand that it's partly my own insecurity. Feeling like he might be the only person who could ever love me and wanted desperately for someone to love him. Believing we're the same, he has to feel a similar pain too and he wants this pain to go away. There's no hate in my heart for my dad. Right carries all of it for me, but I wouldn't wish my relationship with Jonathan Hale onto Garrison or anyone else. She just woke up from a nap, which is why I've been reading and sitting in the car because I knew as soon as I picked her up, she'd wake up and she hasn't napped all day. So I wanted to finish that. And we get more of Connor and Rose in this book. Back to their beginning where he says to her multiple times, I'd never hurt you with me, Rose. And I think that's a beautiful sentiment and that they still use it together. And I know that she's freaking, she's nervous and she's freaking out. Her body's going through so many changes. And I know for the four of them, it it's a lot to handle. And everyone's worried, but everyone's really happy at the same time. That was a beautiful scene, especially on Thanksgiving. So I'm giving y'all a sneak peek into what they show when the years change in the season episode and who it's said by the year. And I absolutely love this quote, which is why I'm showing it. Y'all, how they choose these names in this book has me dying. I love it. It makes me feel so good. It's so sentimental. Oh my God, it's perfect. And I love how they do that. And I think it's the sweetest thing ever. Oh my God. And that was like the purest, most sweetest, amazing thing ever. Lauren and Lo were meant to be together. And though people kept saying they were toxic, they were toxic. They are extremely codependent and all they want is each other but I don't believe that it was that in the beginning yes because of their addictions but now that they're healthy human beings you just see how perfectly fit they are and the two people that thought that they were the most undeserving people in the world who had no self-confidence who down to themselves and thought that they were the lowest beings on the planet and just them two together it's freaking amazing and they've come this far and to read what I just read is beautiful and it makes my heart just sore and I can't I can't I absolutely that's like one of my favorite chapters in this book because it was honestly just beautiful and just I have no words because I, I just don't have words just know it was amazing that was chapter 36 so definitely go read chapter 36 it's one of my favorites I smile water into my tears. Julian Keller and Laura Kinney from X-Men Comics. Hellion in X-23, his two favorite characters in all of Marvel characters, and I love immensely out of his love for them. Why we didn't think of this before? Maybe because we knew these characters are the most precious to us and our story wasn't closed yet. One more. (laughs) I rub the heel of my palm over my wet face. I tilt my head towards Rose. She tilts hers toward me, and I say thank you. Oh my god. What Rose did for Daisy is the most purest, selfless, amazing thing that anyone could do. It's beautiful and now that it's all come to fruition, it is here, there's no more worry. 
she's here. And it's amazing. Tears cascade harder for us both. Rose tries to wipe mine with her thumb and then she kisses my cheek. I love my sisters more than life itself and what Rose did for me digs the very core of love. It exists entirely and soulfully within Winona. <laughs> That's it. My heart has been ripped out of my chest and it's soaring in the sky. Oh my god. The closer and closer I get to the ending of this book, the more and more I want to cry. The more and more I know it's almost ending and the more and more beautiful it gets. Okay, so this right here, Rose defying a rule, going against it. Now, she did this. Now, I understand this, how she feels right now, because having that overwhelming feeling of, you know, wanting to be intimate with someone is one of the hardest things in the entire world, in my opinion, to turn down is when you are turned on and you're with someone that you really want to be with, turning that down is hard. And trust me, I know your struggle because I've had a kid and that six week wait is a lot. And she defied it. And I am, that's just not Rose. And I'm glad that we get to see that. And just the way that Rose and Connor's parenting is, I love it. You wouldn't think that from two very intelligent people who come from a lot of money. You see a lot of horror stories about that in a lot of TV shows and pro probably in reality where they're extremely hard on their children to succeed and you saw that a lot in this book especially from Lowe's father who was verbally abusive to his child a huge difference with Connor and Rose and how they treat their children they don't force them into something that they don't want to do if this subject does not interest them they're not going to force them to continue to do it and I love that they are and I already knew this from the beginning but being able to actually see that in print is amazing and I think how they treat their children is absolutely beautiful. And they have a lot. And just the nostalgia that they bring back in this one scene, in this one chapter with Rose and Connor, I think is beautiful. I love the nostalgia and that heat that they bring and they set each other on fire and it just envelops them in so much. And that's like a huge reason why they are my favorite couple. Again, just so much Chuck and Blair. They are so much the couple that I envision in something that I'm writing myself and I love that I get to see that come out on paper and take some inspiration from it. You guys, and I find this to be the sweetest and cutest of them are Christmas shopping together and I think it's beautiful and then all of a sudden they see these puppies just across and Daisy's kindest, sweetest heart freaks out and she says, Daisy steps out of the gate and says to Poppy and me, I think I'm going to stick around and make sure all these dogs get adopted today. I might be able to attract more people over here. Might is an understatement. There are tons of people around Pet Paradise because we're here. My little sister has a big heart that might not be noticed by all, but I feel Daisy's kindness every time we're together. It's so sweet, and I love that they're all together, and their Christmas shopping is just so wholesome. And then, obviously, Lily and Lowe's banter is still the most hilarious thing ever, and I'm so happy that we get to see it one last time here in this book. Didn't just yesterday you said you and me, I gesture from his chest to my chest. We can do anything, huh, huh? I poke his abs, he pinches my cheek, I squint, he almost smiles, but his sharp glare shades sliver of one. You realize I said we can do anything in re relation to fixing the toaster. And that was a proud moment. We didn't have to buy a new one, and we were able to save ourselves from cold Pop-Tarts. <laughs> I think that is the sweetest thing ever. Yeah, again, the nostalgia with Connor and Rose. They take us back, they're taking us back to the beginning. They were in college and they first started dating and right after Lily's addiction came public and all that, it, it takes us back there and it's the sweetest thing ever. And I love getting to go back there and we get to see them in their element when they first started dating because that, in those books, it was all about Lily and Lowe and it was Lily's perspective. We didn't know anything about them and by the time we actually got their perspective, it was way after they already had been together. And even though it was still kind of fresh, it wasn't new new and we get to see their first freaking kiss in here. I hesitate to ask. Rose Calloway does not cow does not cower. I lifted my chin, locked eyes with his and questioned, Then who are you giving me? He changed for people. It was the a fact both acknowledged and understood. Connor waited to answer, tension jutting out of my collarbone, tension constricting muscles in his arms. You have Connor Cobalt, the boyfriend. And I think it's just so fitting that the first kiss was in a freaking library. His lips an inch from mine, he whispered something, not a quote, not in French. Connor Cobalt murmured, what's inside this feeling that screams at me? His eyes poke of battles and winds and years of position right across from me. Devotion, he neared, felty. His lips touched mine, our very first kiss. My rigid body stayed erect, but I heated like a thousand burning stars. He deepened his kiss and control so I wouldn't have to think. I was thinking. I thought about how my mind sparked and blistered. I thought about how his hands commanded the moment as much as his lips. I thought about how he held me like I'd always been in his possession as he'd always been in mine. What's inside this feeling that screams at me? Devotion. Fealty.
it's so pure and so amazing and just Connor and Rose to every extent. And then them, this is like the biggest part. This is the, the ending of an era and the start of one. I love this so freaking much and I'm so happy that we get to see it come to fruition and completion here in this book. It, it, it gives me so much emotion. I just don't know how to process it. Vulnerable and in love. So in love. He laces his hands with mine. I see Richard Connor Cobalt in nearly every frame of my life and as his lips I've turned with arrogant satisfaction. I know the greatest pieces of us have always remained the same. Connor sees our daughter and has to shift his head, angling his body to more towards me, away from our children. The sheer emotion on his face, I'll never forget that either. While children speak softly to Audrey, I say to Connor, we did it, we did all of it, he clarifies. This room, this love, our future, our dynasty. His hand strokes my cheek, I hold on to that hand and his fingers thread mine. <laughs> Beautiful in every way freaking possible. They have dreamed of this for a very long time in their first, first ever books, Kiss the Sky. We heard about this, they talked about this, and now we get to see it finally all in one piece. It's all right here. They did it. Their love, their dynasty, it's there. But this is a hard conversation to breach because they're all discussing when or how to tell their children about their past and why they're in the media and why they're, they're famous. And they're all so young, but they're so scared that they're all going to find out on their own at some point. And four of them are like, we should wait to the older, and then obviously the other two, which if you can make your best guesses, we all know who they are, wants to go ahead and tell them now, the younger the better. I understand their point of view. Just coming from them, it makes sense, but for the other two couples, to me, it makes sense for to wait for their children to be older, but I get being scared that I find out before they, tell, they get a chance to tell them, especially with kids making rumors, and especially with other kids talking and rumors flying around, and with media being so huge, it's really hard to hide that for a long time. Bruh. Honestly, me, I know me as a parent, I'd be hella worse if someone said this to me and come, that coming from me says a lot because these people in these books are hostile. Rose, as, it, as Lily says, the hot tempered triad, right? Rose and Low. And if someone has something bad to say about my child, all hell's about to break loose. But Reich was smart in what he did. He got it on tape. It was shown around the world. Media just made it blast all over the place and now there is proof out there that some man threatened his child and I mean over something so fucking stupid because you're jealous that their child can swim better than yours. You're a grown ass man, get it together. Like grow the fuck up. Like who are you? Why? And it makes absolutely no sense to me. But I think it was handled in the correct way and I'm highly impressed at how it was done, especially given their children were there. So I like how it was handled, although I hate that it still has to happen. People are still so mean and it doesn't necessarily have to be surrounding them and their, their media presence and just them being famous in general. It has to deal with their children and that's even bigger and worse low than you can even freaking go. Y'all, Jane is exactly like freaking Rose. She speaks just like her. I mean, she speaks just like Connor and her, and I love it. It is the cutest freaking thing ever. Why'd you have to start up with desperately upset because she's Rose's spawn? <laughs> I find that the cutest thing ever, and I'm really happy that we get to see them grow, that we get to see their children grow, and I'm excited to read the spinoff series so freaking much. Why does she have to like what other kids like just to make friends? Why? My heart is breaking for Lily and Mo. I feel so bad that they have to go through this and they have to watch their child go through this. Even though she may not understand it yet or have to deal with it yet, but I know that she will. Ah, uh, again, my heart is breaking so bad for Lo right now. I know this is going to be one of the hardest things he's ever going to have to face and deal with in his life and going through his future and decision that he's going to have to continue to make on a daily basis because he's going to have to go through this grief. I can't believe that this man is finally at an end. This strong, hard, mean man is, is at an end and it was hidden for a long while. I will say that I am proud of him because even though he's made some horrible, horrible decisions that were wrong and a lot of us don't agree with, I do believe that he made a lot of his decisions out of love and then bring his children together for most of them. So I do appreciate that and I appreciate what he's done for all three of them to bring them together. But at the same time, he is a very hard, harsh man who mostly put himself in this situation. But I know that doesn't make it any easier on Lo or the rest of his children. You're better than I was. And that's something that he leaves with Lo and I love that he does. 
I need a drink. Stop. Fight. Lily. Ugh. The struggle. The pain that Lo is going through right now. I can't. Ugh. Reich. I know this is a very sad ending and his goodbye suits him to the core. And it's, it's sad, but at the same time, I'm very happy that we get to see them process this because this is something that I don't want to say we saw coming, but we kind of did in earlier books. So them putting that in here in, again makes the story so much more real and I'm glad that we get to see it, even though again, it is really sad. Most days I feel like I can move mountains. Recently, I feel like the mountains have fallen on top of me. Oh my god, my heart. I, my heart is breaking for Lo right now. I know that that man put him through some serious gut-wrenching pain throughout the years, but that doesn't mean that he loves him, loved him any less, and this is just something I don't think he ever saw that he would have to do, even though, you know, it's inevitable. Life always ends, but it's still freaking hard, and he's struggling so, so much with it, especially with him being an addict. He's having to fight every single day to choose himself, his family, over that drink, and it's, it's extremely difficult. Cravings don't magically end with her embrace, but she reinforces my defenses, my belief in myself. It's not really a girl who fixes me. It's an army of people who I love and who love me. It's a phone call to my brother. It's Connor's reminder that I'm doing my best. It's Lily being the other half of my heart. I stare down at my best friend. Her eyes carry the same pain as mine. We share our feelings like we share everything else. I fight this agony. I'm barely able to say, I don't think I can take a, hor a horrible year, Lil. She holds me tighter. I clasp her cheek, my thumb catching a tear. One year is a blip in our lifetime, Lil. She whispers, you've been through worse. You can take a horrible year. I know you can. I nod a couple times, letting her words sink in. Maybe one year will feel shorter than I think. They'll be good, she says suddenly. You might not see it now, but they'll be good in the, in the year. We'll see our sons and daughters smile. My chest rises. We'll hear Luna tell us stories. I kiss Lily, a kiss that blisters my entire soul. I'm alive, I'm awake. I hold her face and deepen the kiss until she pulls further against my body, breathing life into me. I want to keep my eyes wide open for the little things, a smile, a laugh, a story. I don't want to close my eyes and wait for the year to end. That's right, Lo. Keep fighting, keep holding on. You got this, I know you do. Like she says, you have been through so much worse. The way that Lo stands up for his daughter, it's freaking amazing. I won't choose alcohol over my daughter. She needs me, and that has to be enough for tonight. That's just part of it. Now, kids can be extremely freaking cruel and horrible and mean, and we I, we saw this coming. I said it a couple video clips back that their daughter's going to have to struggle with this because she doesn't fit in, and all the kid, other kids don't understand it. They don't understand her, and their way of, of showing that by being mean, by teasing them, by picking on them, and... She didn't really see that yet until she was invited over to her first ever sleepover and these kids taunted her and they played pranks and jokes on her and it's horrible. But the hor wonderful thing is that is what her father says to her. I love you, I tell her strongly. Your mom loves you. Your brothers and sisters love you. Your aunts, uncles, and cousins all love you. I cup her cheeks. You're so loved. I got something. What did I forget, I ask. I don't have any friends that love me. The way she says it, like it's what matters most, breaks my fucking heart. Luna Hale, I reply, let me tell you the secret of the universe. She rubs her eyes with her fist, but the tears keep, just keep flowing. The entire universe, the entire universe, I affirm. Your worth isn't dictated by the number of friends you have. You ha can have zero friends and still be the most amazing, spectacular person in the whole galaxy. You want to know why? Why? Her voice is meek, but the waterworks have ended. Because the love friends give you isn't even comparable to the love you give yourself. Do you love who you are? She nods vigorously. Yes. Then you're the queen of your own galaxy. I stand up and shake and she grabs onto my hand as we walk ahead. Most beautiful thing ever. And Lo didn't think that he would be a good father. And to me right there, that proves a million times over that he is the best father to his children. It's amazing. And also in here, her freaking cousins stand up for her like... So obviously they're all super close. They have group chats and whatnot. And everyone knew instantly what had happened to her. And her cousins come to the rescue with the same saying painted on their forehead that they did to themselves to stand up in solidarity with her. And what they acknowledge is that my softened eyes lift to Rose. She shakes her head, but she's grinning. Not my idea. They overheard Connor and me. We were talking about it. And then I caught them in the bathroom like this. These are Rose's sons. There's no question about it. Solidar solidarity. For my daughter to have that, Christ, I internally shake my head. Whiplash. We speak of moving mountains, but sometimes people can completely rotate the world just so someone else can land upright on their feet. 
and that is beautiful. Her family is amazing. This family is amazing. They are always there for each other. They love each other unconditionally and will always choose one another. I think that it is extremely beautiful and I'm so happy that we get to see that in their ending. Ah, oh, my heart! <sighs> The project and the career that Daisy envisioned that she put all of her funds into has come to fruition and it's been alive just as long as her oldest child. It's been alive for seven years and now her oldest baby is going off to stay at this place for a month and she's nervous but she's excited and she has encapsulated all of her mom. She even goes with, I have this theory. So I have this theory. Can I guess? Theatrical, I wave her on. My peanut butter cupcake. Your theory is that I'll make at least one lasting friendship. If not this year, then next year. And if not next year, then the year after, after. And if not then, well, maybe I already have that kind of friend. She came up with this all on her own. It's a theory with a positive outcome no matter what happens. We're both smiling and we're both in tears again. That's a brilliant theory if I ever heard one, I say. It's beautiful! Again, you guys, the freaking humor between Reich and... Daisy is freaking priceless. I love them so much. And the nickname that Lo gives them is hilarious. Look at the size of that log. I wag my brow on my husband. What is it? Eight, nine, ten inches? I threw in on his crotch. Reich raises his brows at me. Hey Callaway. Yeah? Wrong log. I feel my smile pull my scarf. But it's my favorite. Lo scrunches his nose, his head swinging between Reich and me. I'm still in earshot raisins. Wait until I've left before this begins. Then he points to the log. Lo gave them that nickname after their ship name came out because he was like, I'm not okay with Raisy. It's Raisins. That's exactly what it sounds to me. So it's, I love it. So it's Crazy Raisins instead of Crazy for Raisy. <laughs> I'm not crying. You're crying. I'm not crying. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, this book would not be this book without this in here. I am so happy that the authors gave us this and that they showed us this and that even though they all have their own families, they are, it's still them. They're all still sisters and they're all still together. And obviously, they add, obviously, even though it's not, they're not part of the core six, Poppy and Willow are part of this and it makes my heart freaking sore that they're doing this. We're here today to make a promise, I say. We promise to always be there for one another, to support each other's choices, to be the tides that wash away negativity and foes. I look around at all the girls and they nod remembering how we all stayed up until 3 in the morning just talking. We might have families of our own, but when we can be together, it's like no time has passed at all. However long we live, however hard life becomes, we'll never lose sight of this sisterhood. We raise our class hands and my sisters and Willow make a second and third and so forth motions. And as I stare between them, I'm truly grateful for these women in my life. They're each so different from me, but I wouldn't want them to be the same. I love them for all their oddities and for all of their strengths. We all fall hushed on the deck, observing the children for a moment. I nearly smile since in the years that have passed, seeing what our futures have become. This morning, Connor said to me, the lake house puts our lives in vivid perspective. I didn't quite grasp the full meaning until now. Without background noise, the tabloids, cameramen, and our jobs were left strong together with simple moments that, dr that drum ferociously through us all. And that could definitely be the ending lines of a book, especially this one. And I'm just so happy that it's not, and they're giving us just a little bit more. I believe the human brain is capable of great and terrible things where dreadful, complicated features. Only a child of Rose and Connor would say that. I love Rose and Connor's kids so much. They are all so different, but you can all tell that they are all still children. I love how Connor explains to his kids how to be uniquely them and to, all, and to choose them and to not try and be like someone else. I love that Connor's explaining to his very, very intelligent son, who is just as intelligent as him, that he's also different than him, that he's not Connor, that he's his own person, and that he can't learn or do the same exact things that Connor did when he was that age. And I love that. He's, he's showing, he's giving that example to his son, and he's pushing him to be him, and not pushing him to be something that he's not. And again, that's something that you don't see in a lot of high society people, or at least in TV shows that you see and heck even in reality I'm not positive about on that fact because obviously I never came from a family like that so I don't have back real actual factual background but fictional background I see a lot of it turn in the opposite way and I love that they are teaching their children what their parents didn't they're treating them and loving them in a way that their parents didn't they're breaking that cycle that you don't really get to see often and I love that they show that show us this in this book in this epilogue novel because we don't ever get to see that and when we do it's a very rare occasion.
Oh. I'm not the villain, but I'm the kind of hero who forgets an overly happy thing song for the credits. I'm too bitter to be that sweet. So one of the kids goes missing at a theme park that they're at. Now, he willingly walks away because he's bored and doesn't want to do this. Obviously, you know that it's one of Connor and Rose's children. And this is in Lauren's perspective. It, he was in the in his group, and he was responsible for him. And he's trying to get him to understand that you may be intellectually smarter than a lot of grown men, but you're still a child, and they can physically overpower you. It doesn't matter how many words they spew at you. They can gag you before you get one word out. And this child doesn't seem to understand that. He says, I exist as I am, and that is enough there. But his parents want him to be that way, and I agree, but you still can't disobey. He was told multiple times not to wander off because they knew that that, that that was a possibility for him to do a very high one, and he still did it. So I know, obviously, he's going to get punished. I have not gotten to that chapter if they're going to show it in here or not, but it's just Lowe, and Lowe's basically telling them, you know, they're not like every other children. Like, they have to understand because they're getting older that they know that they're famous, that they're in the limelight, that there are people out there that want to hurt them. They're not just ordinary children that someone wants to randomly grab. No, someone out there purposely wants to take them, and he's trying to get them to understand that, and he doesn't want to scare them, but at the same time, maybe that's what he needs because he's obviously not getting it, and I love that they also put this in here because it's not just sweet, happy endings or just sweet little moments that they're putting in here. They're also putting in they're also putting in very real and raw things that could happen that aren't so happy. Hence, there was a death in this book already, and it was very sad, and they're having to deal with that and grieve with that and now they're putting in this very real thing that could happen to anyone's child and showing I guess part of what they're trying to rectify the situation and I love that they're still putting that in here oh my god I'm so freaking sad when I was younger I thought I could protect him from this I wished he'd never experienced doubt as he grew older I knew it'd come I knew it would so it doesn't hurt the way that it would have years ago I was hoping he'd meet these rumors when he was 16, 17, not 12. Okay, so the authors did soften the blow here by adding that line in here about it doesn't hurt him as much as it would have in the past, but this is something they were so terrified about that their oldest child would fear or find out or ask questions about because the media kept stirring rumors and throwing out despicable lies about this child not being Lowe's and being Reich's because sex addiction came out they've always been oh well maybe she's having sex with both of them both of the brothers maybe she's in a three-way maybe they have an open relationship oh and then she's pregnant maybe th th this child isn't isn't Lowe's at all oh the he's born he looks like Reich he doesn't look like Lowe this is Lowe's child blah 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 and I I haven't finished reading it so I don't exactly know where he his child saw this or heard this but he comes straight out asking his father about it he's apart by this sobbing crying and it sucks because he just in the middle like in at the theme park it just randomly looks at them and shuts down and it took him hours to finally open up after they were all settled settled in back in their room and he went on the hallway and just lost it and apparently he never takes us long to open up. Apparently he's really comfortable talking about most things with his parents. But this obviously I know would break any child to have to ask or to wonder or second guess who his real father is. Especially one family like thinking that his uncle is his father. So it's very heartbreaking and very sad. But I am very happy that they did soften this blow. And that Lowe feels like he can handle this and that he is sad about it and he's upset about it but he's not overly furious he can be angry and upset but he's not going to like tear down anybody or say hurtful words to anybody about it because t so much time has passed and he has been able to prepare for this question he just did he just hoped that it wouldn't have come this soon and I really feel so bad about it but we knew that one day would happen, and again, I say this a million times, I love that they put this in this book, that they're giving us closure about every, pretty much every scenario that they had thought up in this book, in the books, and put it in there. Things that they had questioned or hoped that wouldn't happen or what happened, they're putting, they're putting these answers in here, and I love that we do get to see that, even if it is saddening, but at the same time, it brings us closure to see all the pieces because it just makes these characters so much more real to me. They're not characters in a book, they are real life people. And here it is. Like, I remember saying and 
I remember bringing up how they were questioning and worried about when they should tell their kids about past and the rumors and just false things and headlines that they would someday see and they kept putting it off and putting it off because they were like they're too young they're too young and this is what he says about it and maybe it's our fault for putting it off for a long time connor and rose have pled with all of us to tell the children about our histories lily sex addiction false rumors the most we did was talk about alcohol addiction but the rest we just kept saying let's wait they're too young maybe connor and rose were right after all maybe it's never a perfect time Maybe we can't blame ourselves for not knowing when to surface adult issues with kids. Is it too early? Is it too late? There's no known calendar for this shit. We just do what we can, the best we can, when we can, and we hope that's enough. Uh, And these two are still having a very, very, very serious conversation. One that I'm not going to speak on, at least part of it, because I want y'all to read the book to find that piece out. But I want to slip in this because they it's a little sliver of happiness and a very serious dark conversation um which it's a hard conversation but honestly we knew it always had to happen it's a serious conversation but i don't want it to be a bad one um obviously i think it's more hurtful because he found out through other sources and not through his family um but either way i think anyway either way i know it's a conversation that happened but a sliver of just really niceness slips in right here and ever since he was born they have wondered what house he would be in as far as harry potter goes and they found out what house he's in and i i think it's beautiful and i love that they tell us because they've talked about it for so long and we get the answer here again another piece of the puzzle has been given to us and thank you thank you thank you so much as Lily would say for putting this in here. So all six of them finally came to the decision to tell three of the children about their past and let them watch the docuseries that all of them created to share their truths with the world. And this goes into great detail about a lot of things that have been in the media that were rumors, that were lies, that were slander and truths as well. And they go in more depth about that, but they have decided to let the older kids know before they find out even more. Some of them may take this in the wrong way and not trust their parents as they did before, and some of them may not care. But they decided to tell these three because, well, if one knows, the other one's going to know. And the other child is just very intellectually sound and has moved up a couple grades and is now with the older kids. So wants to know everything. Resolve centers his gaze. Green pinpoints through refuse to Fisher. You will. Low nods, assuring his son. How much more is there? Years. Lifetimes. On a different occasion, half of us might frown. The other half might recoil. I'd always stay impassive, but tonight, in this moment, we all just smile. Our histories may contain darkness, but there is a great light. I found love in that time. Love that extends to these five people. You'll see, Low tells his son, and Moffy takes a breath, ready for it all. Fireworks explode, bright glittering and sparkling above the castle. We all watch, in a sense, purity. Vibrant colors flash across her faces, and my gaze drifts to Rose. She turns to me, a rare sentimental smile at her lips. I take it all in. What I really, really, really love is that they've been on this family vacation for an entire week, and it's the core six and all of their kids, and every single one, like, throughout this entire book, we never got six consecutive chapters that were in the same month or were around the exact same time or within a couple weeks of each other and in this one we got every one of their perspectives in this one week and I love that they gave us that because it's literally we're at the end of the book I have two more chapters to read and then I hit the ending chapters which don't even have chapter numbers it's just their last chapter in each of their perspectives and it each has a word saying goodbye in their own words and something that I'm not prepared to read but one I know that I am looking forward to to fully fully bring my attention to and just hone in on and completely embrace. The epilogue was 10 years and I didn't know if that led up to this like those 10 years were listed out in this book and the ending was the end of long way down which it is and I realized that today so stupidly because I I had this book laying down flat like this and I saw the back and I read 10 years of laughter and I said oh my god I was I was right I knew it I just wasn't sure and it is the 10 it's the filler information from 
that ending novel of the series to the future, to that ending of the epilogue. It's all the filler information, which I say filler information, and a lot of people are like, ew, I don't want to read that, that's boring, but this is not fucking boring. I'm obsessed. These characters are so real. They're not characters, they're real life human beings, and they're my family. Okay? People in these books are extremely real to me, and I love them so dearly, and they are always going to have a special place in my heart. And because of how sentimental I am, because of how nostalgic I am, this book means everything to me. Falling in Love was just the beginning. The conclusion to the epic 10-book series about the unbreakable strength of family, friendship, and love. Lily and Lo are back one final time. Childhood best friends and soulmates. Rike and Daisy are back one final time. Wild risk takers and flirty adventurers. Connor and Rose are back one final time. Genius rivals and intellectual teammates. 10 years of laughter, of heartache, and love. I think it's beautiful. And yes, I just read the back of the book because it's beautiful. And now we get a piece of Rike's epilogue in his book it's not that same chapter or anything but it is a conflict that he did in his epilogue beginning part when it first started in in his epilogue it was after the fact so again i like that we get to see that closure right okay y'all i just finished the last chapter before the final chapters each couple has their own goodbye chapter it's the one right before those and this line this last chapter is in Reich's perspective and he's talking with Lo and Lily's oldest child and this child is reading a book that was gifted to him by Reich. The quote he points out that he says is his favorite is, if you don't know, the thing to do is to not get scared but to learn. Which I love that they put, the, put that in there because this past year for them has been kind of tough. The realization of what happened between his parents and his uncle uh, for him to get past that with Reich and I love that literally months after the fact they were able to do that in so few words and a quote out of a book. I love that and now I will see y'all tomorrow when I finish this book and I'm so scared and I am <sighs> I have so many emotions I don't have words to explain it just know that my heart is pounding. I did to finish it, but at the same time, I'm not because I'm going to miss every single piece of every single one of these characters in this book. And here we are. We are on the final six chapters of the final book in the Addicted and Callaway Sister series. First, Y'all, I don't know how I'm going to be able to contain my emotions. This is going to be the most difficult I've had to do. In a very long time. You say goodbye. Oh my god. And I just finished Rose's farewell chapter. And I must say that we finally get the answer to something that they alluded to earlier in the book. So they have a special day of the week that all of them as a family come together for dinner. And they have a competition of the minds. Which, which is exactly what Connor and Rose always done. They always randomly ask each other questions about any topic. They have to answer correctly. They do this a lot in competition and they did it in Model UN where they first met. And they are now doing this with their children at a very special dinner time once a week. And I love it and it shows so much love and so much care for their children. And I think it is freaking beautiful and I'm so happy that they share that with us here in this book and it is a perfect ending to a perfect beautiful family I have everything i've desired i have him i have them this dining room breathes life the way that i only imagine what else left what else left is there to say and do i'm already triumphant i'm already proud of him of them and of me connor stares intently longingly seeing and hearing every victorious thought that roars inside of me his deep blues thunder with unyielding promises and affections and that conceited burgeoning grin and deeply he says, here's a secret, darling. I listen poised for anything with him. I've always loved winning, but I would lengthen the time it takes us to reach the end just to spend one more second with you. And now we have Connor. Well, this is a perfect way to describe Rose and Connor. I saddle beside Rose, my hand slips into hers, and I throw at our fingers. My tranquil road water next to her raging ardent fire. Perfect description. And this is breathtakingly beautiful. I don't have words. So, Connor has been trying to express to Rose for a very, very long time that they do this together and they say ensemble. 
they do it together. Team, he's not more than her, she's not less than him, and so on and so forth. And now they're giving that to their children. Jane looks between Rose and Mia very strongly. She says, ensemble. Ensemble, our children then exclaim at once. My lips pull upward into a, into a blinding grin. Rose's moved fingers to her own lips and her fiery yellow green eyes meet my calm deep blue. I skim the base of her neck with my hand. We draw our gazes to our children, fire and water upon them. We tell all seven the one word that has breathed inside of us from the moment we met. We say ensemble together. That, that is the most beautiful sentiment ever. And they have been my favorite couple in this series because they remind me so much of Chuck and Blair and Gossip Girl, which is one of my all-time favorite TV shows. Their fire and ice scenario is beautiful. Their, rival their rivalry, their enemies to lovers, it's they love them so much. They love so fiercely and so boldly and they don't care. Someone that I'm proud to say is one of my all-time favorite characters and they are one of my all-time favorite couples ever. And I'm very glad that their farewell, goodbye chapters, they were the first ones to, I mean, it honestly fits them for them to go first anyway. So, on to Daisy and Rike. Of course, Daisy and Rike's last chapters of the series would be at a zoo. I was never anyone's number one growing up. I was the number two or number three sister, sometimes even number four. Rike and I are number ones to our girls, and it's an insane feeling. And I love that that's put in here because that's one of the why I can relate so much to Daisy is because how she felt and like she didn't fit in or she was always second or third like you said like she said or fourth choice I've always felt like that I've never felt like I've been someone's number one I was someone's first choice that if someone needed help or they wanted to confide in someone or they just wanted to be near someone or to show them love I was never that person that they thought of first I was always second or third choice when someone else wasn't available and that hurts so much. So I completely understand where she's coming from and I love that she finally gets to see that and that their future is so bright and amazing and that she has kids and that she's number one to these kids and that she's number one to her husband. And I love that she finally found that because she struggled with it for so long. You know those moments where you're so full, you can barely breathe, so full of feeling, you can only hope to meet. They crash against me like free falling, like cliff diving and bungee jumping, like screaming at the top of my lungs, like 150 miles per hour, all with right meadows. He holds my cheek with both large rough hands and I reach up and hold his with my small soft. Reich laughs into his own beautiful smile and he says, this is our fucking life Callaway. Every moment is wild, even the quiet ones. And that fits them so fucking perfectly. And that was an amazing perfect end to Daisy Callaway's perspective. What do you fucking say Callaway, fast or slow? Daisy smiles so brightly, so fucking heartfelt. It's hard to stare for long, but I always take the fucking risk. My eyes burn like I'm meeting the sun. And she says, I love you. In 10 years, our love has never fucking waned. I, I raise my brows as day, at days and feel my smile touch my lips faster than, fucking fast then. I step hard on the gas, her smile flooding the car, and the Jeep braces down the highway. Whoa, Sally says, and immediately sticks her head out the window. Nutty joins, tail wagging. Went on a shrieks and glee, bouncing in her booster seat. Faster, I already fu already flying. I pretend to go fucking faster, but keep the speed. Daisy stays in the car, her long legs extended across my lap. With her hands, she draws waves in the wind. No words need to fucking pass. No radio needs to be flipped on. Our music exists right here. We're alive. We're alive. God, we're all fucking alive in this present moment, in this place together. It's beautiful. Aww. And now, lastly, we have the final goodbyes from Lily and Flo who made this series possible obviously the authors did that but if it wasn't for them too i don't think the series would have become what it is today i love this piece so much because lily has been ashamed of herself for as long as i can remember from the start of this series and easily embarrassed shy but one of her children exudes confidence and she's never ashamed of herself even though she is an outsider and even though she has interests that nobody else has interest in, she was picked on and she was treated differently, she's still truly and entirely herself. She embraces it to her core and that's something that Lily never did. And I'm so happy that, that, that Lily is able to see that in her child and feel so happy, so happy that her daughter isn't having to go through the same, same things she did as far as being shameful. And I love that this is happening although she is still just a child and she has plenty of years to lose her confidence and to find shamefulness but right now we're living in this space where that does not happen and i'm living for it but no no
These years have been epic, and not because it was easy, because it wasn't always, but because you and me, we flew. My tears brim, and I see us fly beyond our lowest expectations for ourselves. All the hard parts where our addictions tried to weigh us down. We flew. You made that possible. You know you you have to know that, Lowe says, his voice lowering. Without you, I just don't know, Will. I and cry almost simultaneously again as we watch our kids joy coating their faces, childlike wonder in their eyes. I remember every moment I spent with Lowe. Where we, where we said we can't, where we said we shouldn't, not, pe not people like us, this isn't meant for us. I realized something, so I tell him, I think we finally deserve this. Tears spill out of his eyes, and he says, I believe it too. Both of them are the most self-destructive people in the series. They talk down to themselves so much. They have the least amount of self-confidence, and I love that in the ending of this, they finally see that that they were meant for so much more, that they deserve so much more. And I love that we see this and that they get this and that they are beautiful. And even though their addictions are a huge part of their life and always will be, they are so much more than those addictions. I put a reference of Thrive. She's a hail, so that means one day, someday, she'll thrive. Way, my kids help free me from self-constraints reminding me why I need to get up wake up just stand up and I've said this I said this from the moment that he had his first child that I knew that this was going to be huge for him that having these children were going to make him stronger were going to make him better was was that huge force in his life that was going to push him that extra step that he needed to go and I am so happy that the authors acknowledged that here again very last chapter they add Reich and Lowe go on a run together it is it's them. It's amazing. The ending has that in there with them running together with them in stride with each other. Older brother and little, bro little brother coming together and it's beautiful. I'm gonna fucking cry. I'm gonna fucking cry. Literally the ending of this book, these chapters, I have two fucking pages left. It is the, the last chapter of this book is the exact same time, the exact same space. The everything is the exact same as the epilogue and long way down. The only difference is that it is Lowe's perspective and not Reich's is the, they're in the exact same place, the exact same time, they're in the exact same rooms, seeing the exact same people, saying the exact same things, hearing the exact same things, just in someone else's mind, and it's beautiful, because it reminds me of Thrive so much, because that book is in, in Lauren and Lowe's perspective, but in the exact same time that the Calloway Sister series was happening, and it's wonderful that it's here, and that this is the finale. I think it is amazing, and again, comes so full circle. With the six of us on this hill and the packed lake house behind us, I feel sentiments far beyond the sunrise this morning, this moment. We filled an empty house. I'm 37. Just yesterday, I was 20 and meeting some of these people that I'd spend my life with. They'd become my home. Just yesterday, I was 20, still deeply and desperately in love with my best friend. I grew older. We all grew older. In a blink of an eye, our children will grow, up to, will grow old too. And I'll think, just yesterday, they were 20, headed for college, falling in love. Memories will flood behind us. The lake house no longer filled to the brim, as quiet as the moment we're as the moment we first walked in and we'll sit on the hill feeling the stillness that exists and then we end we end where we started just as us all six of us and it's officially over that was beautiful in every aspect of the word some kind of perfect is the epilogue novel of the Callaway and addicted series books I have absolutely and completely and totally fallen in love with all of these characters they are more real to me than any other characters in books are that ended so beautifully and so well and I can't believe that I've kept it together this long probably because I'm very distracted by my child and my husband that's in the background but all I can say is if you have not read this or you've never heard of them please go read them thanks to my sister in the entire world for introducing me to this series and to these authors because it is beautiful and I'm so happy that I was I was able to find them and read this because they are part of me forever they have taught me so many things they've opened my mind they've shown me perspectives that I never had even seen or thought of before the series is more is more than just a book series it is real and they touch on real serious facts and it's reality and things that happen in real people's lives and it is so freaking true it's more than just tv series in in fiction it's it's more than that it's real life and that's exactly what it feels like so 
with that being said thank you guys all so so very much for joining me on this read with me for all 10 books i'm so so it's so bitter bittersweet that we are finally here at the end i have highly enjoyed reading all of these and i'm excited to do my next one and i'm so happy that i chose this series to be my first read with me ever thank you guys so much again for joining me on it and this is the ending of some kind of perfect the calloway sisters and the addicted series i will see you here again next time but i say this is the end but it's never the end because they will always forever live on in all of us Okay.